Hey guys, welcome to The Value Script. I'm Meredith Carmichael. I'm without Lonnie today. We've got um, Celeste McCarthy with us. She is a nutritionist at Protea Medical Center. And um, we, Lonnie and I started going there, I think it was 2017, 2018, and um, just could not be happier with our experiences there. Oh, so and good. Yes, it's, it has been fabulous for us. So um, I'm excited to talk to you today about nutrition and everything that goes into your practice and how you guys work together. And so maybe let's get started with that. How did you guys put your, put your practice together? Uh, well, we got started. We had gone to Hawaii. We, get, we met in Seattle and then got married and moved to Hawaii. Um, and Brenda went to school there. And we were going to decide what our next plan was. And we were going to maybe move back to the Northwest. And I said, well, heard there's a school in Arizona for naturopathic medicine. Let's go have a desert adventure. <laughs> so <laughs> nice. four, that was four years that turned into 20 this summer. Wow. Um, so in the process, went to medical school and had a baby who was born with some medical conditions and decided that we had to start doing something so mm. put some of his knowledge at school to use and find a way to serve people so we started the practice then um tiny little so practice great. in tempe and it kind of started to grow from there yeah um, yeah so we're really proud of what we've, we've we've built together it is amazing it really is amazing working with brendan like really is the first doctor that I tell everybody about. I'm like, okay, right. you got you got to go, you got to go. It's so so phenomenal. Everything is so great, and um, it's a different approach to practicing medicine. It's Absolutely. not just treating the problems. It's okay. Why are you having this problem? Let's right. prevent you from having these problems. Exactly. It's amazing. So it kind of looks at the whole the whole picture because um, some the medical traditionally has looked at. You know, like you said, symptoms mm -hmm. and how to bandage mm -hmm. symptoms and go on your way. But really, we look at kind of detective work in a yes, way. To yes. See, okay, what is the root cause of this? How mm -hmm. can we find a way to get people up towards their own wellness? And then we're here for other things if we need it. But just that empowerment so you understand the why of how you're feeling a certain exactly. way. Because sometimes we don't understand the answers of why we're feeling a certain way. And that right. comes with, you know, fatigue and depression and also food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. We have no idea why right. we're feeling a certain way right. and you don't really know where to start. Yeah. So we kind of give you the tools to ask the questions and find out how you can help yourself be better holistically. Yeah. So one thing, like when I was starting out figuring how to get control of my health, I had no clue like yeah. what anything meant. So yeah. like I didn't know how to read food labels. I didn't in none of it. And so I kind of started with my fitness pal mm -hmm. and Lonnie worked with me, like, you know, teaching me what things meant. And, right. and one thing that's really hard, if you don't have any knowledge of all of those things, how macros work and all of that is you can look at something that says whole grains or whatever, you know, all the buzzwords that we fat hear, free back fat in the eighties and nineties. Remember yeah, that? And you yeah. think, oh, this is healthy, <laughs> right. but, but we're misled a lot of the time because I don't know, people got to really take control and learn. So what, for somebody that really doesn't know much, how do you get started on dialing that in? Well, you really start to understand that our bodies are complex systems. So you might be hearing, feeling these signals from your body, but you have no idea how to decipher them. So you kind of start from the basics like, okay, what is my approach to food? If you're looking, we're talking about mm -hmm, a food mm -hmm. nutrition perspective here. Um, and then you can almost start to think, when I eat this, I start to feel a certain way. So it almost gives you the power to be your own little food detective, I call it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So and paying some, attention to how you feel. And paying feel, attention right? to how you feel. And then one person might do it for, I'm going to take myself for example, dairy might be great for someone. For me, it's like a poison. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I had to do mm -hmm. that by process of elimination and not be afraid to look at food and kind of decipher and decode because food is a big trigger for people. Yeah. And yeah. then we start to have this unhealthy relationship with food and we start to like get mad at ourselves for eating certain things. And then you eat it and you feel guilty and there's a shame and there's this whole thing that stacks up. So kind of helping people start from the beginning and say, okay, what, how do I feel when I eat this? Mm -hmm. Let's eliminate one thing at a time, gluten, dairy, corn, and then when you add it back in, pay attention to your body's signals. Yeah. So from there, and it kind of can be a long process, but some people are, we're used to getting quick fixes. Mm -hmm. So with nutrition, I'm like, it doesn't have to be a quick fix. It took a long time to feel this way with food. 
it's okay if it takes a little bit of time to figure out what foods make you feel really good. Yeah, which is empowering. And ultimately, it, it is feel, empowering. Yeah, yeah, when you realize, like, I feel so much better when yes. I eat healthy, when I do these things for my body, yes. it makes you want to do it. It makes it easier to not eat that cake or right. the donuts that are out in the break room or whatever because you realize I'm going to feel so much better if I get yes. control. So is it an eat and reaction thing? Or is it a test that you take? I well, guess? there's a couple of different. The really the best way to do it is an elimination diet. Okay. And people, it takes a little bit of time. Mm-hmm. So the top five allergen foods are gluten, corn, soy, dairy, and eggs. So even if you start there, the comprehensive elimination plan is this huge protocol. But sometimes it can be very intimidating. So I kind of say, let's start with these top five or six. So eliminate all of them for a certain amount of time, whatever you talk about with the, with the patient, because we want to customize these things, these tools we have that make people feel successful and that work. And then you do a food journal or whatever kind of spreadsheet, depending on how people's minds think, because everyone thinks differently about, about how they organize themselves. Mm-hmm. So then you say, okay, process of elimination. Mm-hmm. I had dairy after, not for a week, and 30 minutes later, I felt this symptom. Mm-hmm. Two hours later, I felt this symptom. So I'm like, okay, it has to be that. For me, I avoided it. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sure it's not dairy. I'm sure it's something else. Let's try everything else. So finally, I'm like, okay, let's look at this. I'm like, okay, dang it. <laughs> it's in technical, my body's like, hello, what other signals can I give you? Yeah. So then I always say to people, give yourself grace too. Like if you, you give you the power of being like, okay, I'm gonna go to a wedding. There's gonna be cupcakes. Most of the time I avoid, but give yourself the grace to have that food and know how you're going to feel. And sometimes it's worth it. <laughs> right. <laughs> sometimes right. it's so rather than punish yourself being like, all right, I'm going to feel bloated. I'm going to have a little brain fog. I might have a headache, but right now I'm going to enjoy it. And then the next day I'm going to get back on track. Mm-hmm. So it's really about empa- having food empower you, not be something we have to suffer through or guilt ourselves through, yeah. which I think is ultimately, we should all love food. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Ultimately, because it fuels us and it gives us joy and there's, you know, social components to it. So rather you just find things that work for you that you can still feel the enjoyment and then know you have those moments mm-hmm. and not wonder, why mm-hmm. do I have a stomachache? Right. right. Well, okay. Cause Cause my, I had pizza last night because I was in New York and I yeah. couldn't help myself. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's kind of, I think it's kind of a realistic approach to food as well. Because even like my uncle is finding out now, just la- two weeks ago, he had to go into the hospital and he passed... 36 kidney stones because of the diet that he had previously. Yeah. And now he's having to cut back all this salt. Right. And rework his diet. Mm -hmm. But because of his diet before is what led to all this. Right. And so it, he's in his sixties and just now learning like, Oh, Hey, my diet needs to be this now. And so interesting how people come up with such resistance to diet. They'll want to take a pill or something first, but really, Diet and food brings up so many, so many connotations, mm-hmm. so much family things. So it's, it's really important to create that trust with each person that comes in because each person is a, a bio-individual. So you read these diet books, this is a million dollar industry, right. all these promises. Right. And then you try it and it worked for your neighbor and your cousin and your friend and then it doesn't work for you and you start to feel like, well, what's wrong what's with me? Wrong with me? Yeah. And that doesn't help us already feeling guilt and shame and whatever about mm-hmm. things. So then mm-hmm. we've tried the next diet fix. So ultimately it's like, I want to get people to get away from that cycle. The diet fads. The diet right. fad cycle. And yeah. there's somebody who said, each of those diet fads are worthwhile in their own right, but doesn't mean it's going to work for you. And it's not sustainable. Like Sometimes if you try to do this crazy diet where you're restrictive and like the like, keto stuff, it's like, it's like keto diets and stuff well, like it's that. Certainly, so you I th- yeah. Keto, well, and it, I think it has a place sometimes. Yes. Like, and, and maybe to help your body redirect and, you know, get healthy again and then gradually start to introduce, you know, more, a more natural way of eating, sustainable way of eating. Yeah. But, but I think, nutrition can feel so overwhelming to people a lot of times and so maybe just taking those baby steps of eating real food cut out the packaged stuff like fruits and vegetables and proteins and like start there and women women do have a a weird thing with protein you said eat more protein for guys and you guys are like all right no problem but for a lot of women because there's this programming that happened when High school, college years for girls is very formative years in how we think about food. Mm-hmm. And protein is going to bulk you up. Mm-hmm. And now it's like this. Remember the sugar-free craze yes. that happened? Yeah. And all those salads I ate with no salad dressing. 
oh. I mourn all those salads, right? <laughs> and then you realize later, it's like, oh, never mind. Healthy fats are good for you. So it's like you have to reprogram these little parts in our brain that had something set when we were in formative years for mm -hmm. a lot of us. So it's cool. almost like reprogramming. And, and that's the most important thing because that's the kind of things that are stick. The diet fads are going to come and go, but how you reprogram your brain and how you associate yourself with food is what's going to ultimately, we want it to last for people so it can be sustainable and food can be enjoyable now, again. Now yeah. I have a question. Yeah. yeah. I saw one, I saw a video on a guy that was talking about how he thought it was so wild that portion sizes, <laughs> when you go to a restaurant and let's just say you order the filet. Mm-hmm. That portion is the same portion for every single person. Yes. And he thought it was so wild that they just give it to you and you right. just assume that you are supposed to eat that much. Right. So I didn't know your take on a question like that. For well, the great American diet didn't get us very far. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ultimately, in our 20s and 30s and 40s and 50s, as we know, you know, everything starts to change and shift. So portions really... 2,000 calorie diet is, has always been like the norm, but that takes in consideration a five foot one woman and a six foot eight guy. <laughs> yeah. So 2,000 calories, if you're based on metabolic rate, which what our in body, we have a, a, a body scale reading that shows all of your metrics and helping you to lose weight in a healthy way. It says what your individual um, basal metabolic rate is. So if you're a woman who's shorter, it's going to be 1,150 calories, for example. Mm -hmm. Or if you eat 2,000 calories. Yeah. It's not going to be sustainable. And you don't need that much food to fuel yourself. So it's really about understanding your body dynamics. Gotcha. And that tool like our scale can really help you understand that a little bit. Because a six foot eight woman and the five foot one. <laughs> oh, that's true. Or the six foot eight man and the <laughs> six foot eight woman. Right. Uh, they six need foot eight woman. Man. Can we just go back, please? Can we just cut? Can we just cut? <laughs> and the five foot one woman go to the same place and order the same meal. Exactly. They're getting the same portion. Exactly. Just, that's crazy to me. It is crazy. But a lot of us are programming when we were kids too. Eat what's on your plate before you leave. Exactly. So that's a hard one to, yeah. for people to kind of unravel too. Mm -hmm. I wasn't so allowed to leave the table. Hmm? I wasn't allowed to leave the table unless my plate was clear. Exactly. So I just, yeah. I, I cannot remember if it was something I saw on Instagram or something, but somebody was talking about how it's not good to make your kids eat everything on their plate because they grow up not exactly. learning to listen to their body. Right. And which is so important when right. it comes to food. Listen to your body. Like right. don't, I don't know. Well, and then a lot of times when we get older, we, and then people say, I was talking to a client the other day. She's like, so many times people say, you need to start eating healthier, better choices. And she's like, I don't even know what that means. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Where do I start? Mm -hmm. So we're, I think we're not given these investigatory tools when we're kids to start to listen to our own body. Yeah. So I think if we can start earlier, then it's going to prevent a lot of these problems later that we're unraveling now in our 40s and 50s or mm -hmm. however, however old mm -hmm. are we when we start that process. Yeah. I wanted to go back to when, like when you were talking about protein and women bulking up. Because when we first started, um, like Lonnie and I, and mm -hmm. he was, he has always lifted weights and that kind of thing. And that was never my thing. And he was like, you really need to start lifting and getting more protein and building muscle. And my first thought was like, well, I don't want to look like a man. I know. Like I'm a small girl. Like right. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want the bodybuilder look like I, I, to me, that wasn't attractive, but, right. but he taught me like, you're not going to look like a man. Right. <laughs> like you're, you're yeah. not going to, you know, do those things that make those women look like that. But yeah. it's, but yeah. you want the muscle tone. You need to build muscle. You need protein. You need exactly. that full picture exactly and the sweet spot as we continue to age vibrantly i call it because anti-aging is a misnomer because we're all going to age mm -hmm. so how and that part of that is having your metabolism work in such a way that you you lose body fat while you put on muscle which is hard to do as well <gasps> And I'm so excited. I'm I so know. Excited. That's why I'm segueing I'm into so that. <laughs> See what so, I did there? A little you, segue. I did. That was beautiful. That was so beautiful. Because, and for me too, because the longest time I was like kind of skinny fat. I yes. was always a thin. That is, and I didn't yes. really work out because I had scoliosis and my back always hurt. So mm -hmm. I didn't really need mm -hmm. to. Right. But right. then when you find, I finally got on the, on the scale when we first got it about eight to 10 years ago, we, we bought the first in body scale and you realize, okay, that's how much muscle mass I have. And then as I started working out more and paying more attention, my muscle would build, but I didn't, you have to work really hard to look like a bodybuilder. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not just right. protein and you know, 
chicken breasts and broccoli all the time. It's also being in the gym consistently. So I realized you feel better because we are our bone density. We need the muscle mass as we get older. Mm -hmm. So we start to kind of, my mission kind of is to help women reprogram our obsession with the top number of the scale. Yes. It's not just the top number of the scale. So for me, it's like I have this ideal number always, but your ideal number should shift as you get older because your Mm -hmm. body dynamics change. Mm -hmm. So let's look at the body fat percentage and your muscle. So the top number might be the same, but you feel better, you're healthier, right. you have more energy, you're more vibrant because you're putting on healthy muscle mm-hmm. and your body is fueling itself by burning mm-hmm. through fat. And so learning, that's yeah. kind of interesting to see women who come in and we freak out and then after a while you start to, well, look at what your body's doing. Right. So then it's like a whole, I don't know, it's an education tool that people kind of feel empowered about when they start to realize. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I remember um, our my grandparents have a cabin in Strawberry. And, oh, and it's beautiful when, up there. Oh, it's so beautiful. I love it. And and to step off the porch, there's about this much space to step off the porch. Wow. And I remember bringing stuff in, you know, as we're unloading our stuff. And I went to step up onto the porch. And it was kind of hard for me. Yeah. I'm like, I'm... I'm in my early 30s. This should not be hard. Yes. And that was like when it hit me like, I got to start doing something yes. about this because it's just going to get worse. Right. <laughs> like, I got to start working out and lifting yeah. weights and, right. and doing those things to help keep my body the best it can be. Because right. even though we're aging, I think people sometimes mm-hmm. think, well, I'm just getting older. That's just how it is. Exactly. And that's not, it's, it's not just how it is. You can do something about it. So I'm 43. I feel better than I have in years i've had Amazing. seven babies yes like, i'm putting on muscle so the in body <laughs> yes so this was so exciting for me i just had my blood review with dr mccarthy and i in january Jan, let's see january 31st i was at 125 pounds mm-hmm. and let me see um 50 percent um skeletal muscle mass 26 percent body fat and then when I went for my review on um, August 1st, I was at 123 pounds and I had put on almost five pounds of skeletal muscle mass. Woo-hoo! So excited. <laughs> and I lowered my um, percentage body fat almost 6%. Amazing. And this is from months. working with them? That's yes. amazing in seven yes. months. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Wow. Like, wow. right. <laughs> So and, and, and that's my favorite thing about this job is the patient education and empowerment that comes in. Because yeah. you guys, when we get so tired of hearing, oh, sorry, you just had a couple of babies, you're going to be tired. Right. Oh, your, your hormones right. look normal. <laughs> well, we kind of debunk all that normal. Yeah. And so when you start feeling better, you want to do other things that make you feel even more empowered. Mm-hmm. So it's so fun to celebrate that success with patients. Because, you know, uh, we put them on, the doctors put them on a diet protocol along with the hormone protocol. So they'll come in and see me like, and once a month is a nice gauge. If you come in once a week, you start to get, you know, we start to get obsessed. But mm-hmm. after a month, you can see, okay, all this stuff I'm doing, that I'm paying attention to these signals and the body is showing, showing reflecting how I feel so much better yeah. too. So yeah. all these pieces put together to make it a sustainable long-term road to your health. So you're not constantly yo-yo dieting, mm-hmm. going up and down and mm-hmm. feeling like crap and then feeling good again. So it's kind yeah. of, it, all these tools we have are really there for patient empowerment first mm-hmm. and foremost. Do you guys take in any age patient or do you specifically target certain well, age groups? our main clientele is usually 40s and 30s to 50s, okay. 60s. And we try not to see kids. We will, we'll, we will take some younger gotcha. kids. Okay. No pediatrics. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to stop somewhere. Gotcha. But yeah. sometimes, <laughs> but, but moms sometimes will come in and they'll start feeling better. And then, you know, younger daughters who are late, late teens, early 20s, you want to impart that knowledge onto your kids. Mm-hmm. So they don't have to go through all that we went through in our 20s and 30s without knowing about our bodies and our dynamics. Yeah. So a lot of moms will bring their daughters in too. And so it's kind gotcha. of... Cool, because you, you know, kids at that age are sponges for information. We're right. We're reprogramming in our forties. Yeah. So, well, because you know. I'm I'm 33 and I'm becoming more aware of like the things I have to put in my body. Yeah. I mean, I was aware of that years ago, but a different kind I'm of awareness seeing it more as you get now. into your 30s. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So I just didn't know if that's something more prevalent if you're seeing people in their 30s and. Well, as I'm sure Dr. McCarthy will talk about next, yeah. um, it's kind of a you know low testosterone and hormones being out of whack. It's kind of an epidemic. It doesn't necessarily start when you're in your 40s, 50s. We're seeing people in their 20s and 30s too. Gotcha. So the earlier you can get a handle on it, the more your long-term health and your wellness is going to improve. Mm-hmm. Is that something that you're going to have to see regularly? Because as your body changes, because for example, can you develop a lactose intolerance? Yes. Because I think I did. 
milk was a bad choice. Okay. I did. I for sure did. Okay. Or maybe I always had it and I never realized it. That's the other thing I'm Which, curious about. I don't know if I always had it and I just dealt with it. I have no idea. Well, a lot of times it's how food is processed too. Like gotcha. people in like Europe, for example. Gluten all the time, you know, delicious pastries and, you know, and milk in their lattes. It's not the same as it is here. So you notice that sometimes over time with hormones and stress and all, which I'm sure Dr. Brother talk about as well, all these things that start to take a toll on your body as you get older, all of a sudden you start to have food allergies that you didn't have before. Or I call it, it's, it's like you have the EpiPen complete allergic reaction, but it starts with the irritation. Mm -hmm. So you can have a food irritation, food intolerance, and then it goes up from there. So if you have a food irritation, it's easy to kind of ignore it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. and then I have, I would call mine an intolerance to dairy. Gotcha. So there's levels of it, and it's how much you want to kind of investigate, really. Gotcha. Like I okay. said, if you have, you know, the pizza when you're on vacation, yeah. I will feel sluggish and not very good for a couple days. Yeah. But someone who has a full-on allergic reaction is going to be a different response to their bodies. Gotcha. So it's kind of a way like how you how you process foods is going to be different. I think as you as you get older. Because my well. uh, my little uh, secret little crave is milkshakes. I mean, it's delicious. Uh, uh, it's delicious. <laughs> that's I, I respect that craving. <laughs> Mine is grilled cheese. But uh, see, <laughs> that's amazing. But I know that there's going to be consequences to yeah. it when I before I even go into it, and right. I, I'm willing to risk it. Well, and I want to share a story about my, my personal experience too. Um, I was I had really bad seasonal allergies for years. When all the dogwood trees would bloom, I'd have to have an inhaler sometimes. A couple a couple weeks of the year were really terrible. And then when I did this elimination diet for myself and I finally eliminated dairy, I was running in March one year. I was like, I'm running and there's trees blooming and I can breathe. Hmm. And I started to realize, when your immune system has a better reaction to seasonal allergies if you're taking away distraction from trying to process a wow. food intolerance. Wow. So then I started playing around theory a bit more, and yeah. sure enough, my seasonal allergies got worse. So that's just my personal experience. And other yeah. people, and intolerances and irritation symptoms come up in different ways for different people. It's not like, oh, your joints are inflamed, that's got to be a gluten allergy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Someone else could have a stomachache from gluten or brain fog. So it's also different symptoms for different foods for different people. Wow. So that's why it's not like a one one trick pony in a yeah. you know, right. one effect, right. which is frustrating for some patients, but ultimately it starts to be a little bit empowering. Mm -hmm. You're only yeah. bio-individual, you're unique. So of course you're gonna be unique in how food sits, hits your system. Yeah. Well, cause so. I, had a, I have a pollen allergy, but now I'm th sitting here and I'm like, maybe it was too many milkshakes. <laughs> I mean, a combination, yeah. I mean, it could be a combination yeah. too, right? Yeah. Talking about brain fog, I know with a lot of moms that that talk about after you have your babies, I know. Like, and you just you know I feel like my brain doesn't work. And for the longest time, I just thought, gosh, that. that's just the way it is. My yes, mom. and dang it, that's not just the way it is. Right, it's well, not. I, I mean, you our, can like fix I said, it. our bodies are very complex systems, and all the different parts work together. Mm -hmm. So if your sex hormones are off, then your cortisol and your thyroid function, everything starts to get affected. Mm -hmm. So and all that transfers to your neurotransmitters as well. Yeah. So when you start getting, looking and pay attention to these signals from your body and start doing some corrective things for bioidentical hormones and looking at your, the way food hits your system, then all of a sudden your brain fog, you finally start to feel this veil starting to lift. Yeah. But yeah. that is a real thing for moms because when you just have mm -hmm. a baby, it's a huge, huge thing that happens to your body. It's a beautiful yes. thing. So we have to honor that we're, gonna, we're not going to feel the same and that's okay. But how can we kind of start to decipher the signal so we can start to feel feel like ourselves again. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that was me. I was, I was patient one for Protea. Yeah. <laughs> I tried three kids in three years. Yeah. And I thought, okay, I just, I'm in my early 30s, I guess this is just how I'm going to be now. Mm -hmm. And then when she started to realize that does not have to be that way with a couple of tweaks to your hormones, mm -hmm. then all of a sudden it's like, oh, there she is. She's back. Yeah. Yeah. It's just so, yeah. Isn't it so empowering? And it affects everything. Like, I don't know. I just want moms to, to feel empowered yes. to to work on themselves, to take that time to invest yeah. in yourself, to be healthy, yeah. to learn what your body needs, to get yeah. your hormones straight, because right. you you can be a better wife, a mm -hmm. better mom, yeah. like better it affects friend, better everything. everything. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's why it's a you know the, what, the term wellness is kind of a buzzword and holistic as well. But it truly is a holistic approach. So mm -hmm. you have the tools to empower yourself to feel better and say, oh, if something is off. Call our office and say, I want to get this looked at in my next blood draw. Absolutely, it's your body, it's your lab work. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's mm -hmm. like, okay, what do you want to talk about in this, in this nutrition appointment? Mm -hmm. And so the tools we can offer, they're only going to be helpful if it's helpful for the person. 
So if you try the fitness pal, some people like I hate tracking things. My mm -hmm. fitness pal, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'd be the worst page. I'd be the worst client. <laughs> but some people, that's how their brains think. So yeah. I'm like, okay, my fitness pal doesn't work. Give me a general ballpark. Write down what you ate then, mm -hmm. and let's try these two or three things. Like each appointment, try two or three things. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it gets to be overwhelming. Right. And then come back, and we'll talk about those things. And if those things, then we'll try something else. Yeah. So it's really kind of a holistic, empowering approach to it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you just want someone in your corner to listen. Right. So that's where the health coaching aspect of being a nutritionist comes into play, too. Mm -hmm. And even so. just writing it down. Like, I realized once I started writing down or tracking what I was eating. Mind-blowing, right? You realize, like, <laughs> oh, I'm snacking on this. Yep. Like, just little things throughout the day or, like, mm -hmm. finishing the kids' mac and cheese. And oh you God. don't So many years right? of my life were spent finishing kids' place. <laughs> right? That was, like, my dinner for three years. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, what did yeah. I eat tonight? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's yeah. true. And then I would edit. Because we self-edit. Mm -hmm. Let's be honest. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I just had... You know, two bites of that but really just it right. behooves you to really be honest and then not judge it's like okay that's what happened what can I reduce what can I replace how can I shift in little ways sometimes mm -hmm. rather than six diet cokes a day try three right. right and after a week see if it goes down to one mm -hmm. you know so it's also it's, it's kind of manageable in that way too because yeah. I think a lot of dietitians and nutritionists it's like a list of no's mm -hmm. and most of us if we see a list of no's we're just going to think, feel discouraged instantly. Yes, yes. And right off the bat, before you even try that, before yep. you even try, you're instantly thinking, all I see is don't do this. Mm -hmm. it's like, okay, well, let's let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. Let's replace it instead, and then start to reduce, reduce it, replace it, and then reassess how you feel, and then go from there. Yeah. So it's it's yeah. kind of a long, a longer approach, but ultimately, it's longer towards your overall sense of empowerment and for sustainable yourself. exactly sustainable rather than these crazy like i'm gonna mm -hmm. cut out everything that i love we're not gonna do that <laughs> most right, of us right. some people can mm -hmm. i have a sister who's like that i'm like bless you you're so dedicated but most of us we're not quite that dedicated and that is okay <laughs> yeah because food is amazing and you know it serves different purposes in our life right so i think that's that's our overall approach with hormones and with with everything with our patients yeah. thoughts on uh cheat meals <laughs> 